Let's give it up one more time for Boys to Men at City Church. That took me back to eighth grade dances back in junior high. <laughs> that was fun, wasn't it? We can have fun in church, can't we? You know, right now, if you haven't, this is a great time to get your phones out and check in on Facebook for a great cause and, and do hashtag mixtape Boys to Men. And uh, we're giving back to kids uh, this month to uh, be cured of cancer. So please check in if you can. You know, that song, End of the Road, is what I want to preach on today. In fact, if you don't mind, just say it with me, End of the Road. You know, that song is about a relationship and a breakup and asking her to stay with him and to make it to the end of the road, to endure. And I think about our relationship with God. And just like we have ups and downs with our spouse, our friends, or who, or who knows what, our family, whatnot, we can have ups and downs with God too, can't we? And really thinking about uh, paralleling that song to our faith today and thinking about making it to the end with God, going all the way in this ongoing relationship. And I'm not trying to be funny, but when I heard the, uh, the lyrics, you belong to me and I belong to you, we know what the song is about, but what if God is saying today, you belong to me and I belong to you? Come on, isn't that awesome about God reaching for us today? So in this room and online, if you don't know Jesus, receive Jesus today. And if you have received Jesus, take your next step today. So if you have your Bibles, please turn to Matthew chapter 24. I want to read just a few verses, and then I want to highlight two big things in this idea of the message, end of the road. And man, I thank God for our team. Aren't they talented? That was awesome today. Awesome. And so this chapter is a famous chapter. If you haven't read it, I want to encourage you to read it, because right now as we're seeing all the stuff going on, there's been a lot of talk about the apocalypse or the end of the world. And I do believe that Jesus is coming for you and for me. And that's a biblical promise. And I believe we're closer to him coming than ever before since he's been raised from the dead. And so people are wondering this. And this chapter is really setting up all the signs, not all of them, but several. For example, in the first 14 verses of this chapter, Jesus gives 14 different signs to understand the end of the world. And I'm going to read just four of them to you. So I'm kind of going to pick up in the middle at verse 10. And Jesus is saying, And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. Many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Sin will be rampant everywhere, and the love of many will grow cold. This is our theme verse. But the one who endures to the end shall be saved. And the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all nations will hear it, and then the end will come. So think about that. He that endures to the end. The idea of this ongoing relationship with God and staying with him really forever. You know, in the midst of all these signs that Jesus is giving in this chapter, and it's chucked full of signs, I want to, and I really want to encourage you to read it. In, in one verse, though, of the chapter, Jesus says, when you see these signs, don't panic. But how many know it's easier said than done? And yet, this stands out to me, out of all the signs in this chapter, verse 13, he that endures to the end shall be saved. That verse speaks a couple things to me. First, it speaks that some people will endure to the end. It also speaks to me that some will not. And they will not, in these verses I just read, uh, two of the reasons they may be deceived or their love for God, as he said it here, will grow cold. And there's many reasons why that can happen. And so when I thought about this message and I thought about the guy singing the song, I thought about out of all the stuff we're seeing and people talking about, you know, the end of the world, what are, or what are things we can do to endure to the end? You know, what's our part in this? You know, he's the Savior, and what can we do? And we could probably have a list that's pages long, but I want to highlight two things, and I'm listing these two things today that are obviously in the Bible, but I'm listing them because of the tenor and the tone of what's happening in our country with race relations, political divisions, hating each other, striving, fighting, violence, and more, and fear. And, and, and then the things happening on the inside of us. So these two things are based on what we're seeing 
that you and I can choose to do to help us endure to the end and go to the end of the road. Are you ready for this today? Because I want to see Jesus face to face. How about you? The first one that I want to encourage you with when I think about the apocalypse or the end of the world, the end of the road for this message, I think about you and I choosing to worship God. That may sound simple to us today, but I want you to lean in and just hear this on a deeper level. Because the Bible says in John chapter 4, the Father, God the Father, is looking for people to worship Him. We praise God. Please hear this. We praise God for what He has done, but we worship God for who He is. This is so important for us in this room and online because that means that I worship God not based on what I get. I worship God not based on how I feel, what others do to me, or what is happening around me. I worship God because he is God and God alone. I choose to worship beyond my circumstances because he is the God above the heavens and the earth, and he is so great and so powerful and so massive that the earth is his footstool. This is big because when you think about in, uh, um, going to the end of the road, and when you think about committing to this relationship uh, with God and thinking about an eternal impact, this is huge. You and I must make the decision on a daily basis. I will worship God no matter what is going on around me. I worship him because he's holy, because he's good, he's love, he's kind, he's merciful, he's compassionate, he's my friend, he's my savior. I worship him beyond what's happening or what people think about me or how they feel. I'm worshiping because he is the creator of my soul. He's the lover of my soul. And so I love this idea because it's speaking, as we heard in the song, it's speaking to this commitment and this endurance that I am not just going to show up when I feel it or when everything's going my way. I will worship God in the midst of the fire. I will worship God in the valley. I will worship God on the mountaintop. Come on. I will worship God no matter who is my president. I will worship God no matter what they think about me. I will worship God because he's God. Come on, give him praise real quick. He deserves it today. Enduring to the end. Enduring to the end. The end of the road. This means that when I worship God based on who he is, this is deep now. This is why this is not just, oh yeah, I worship God. And we can preach all year about worshiping God in a variety of ways. But this goes deeper real quick. Because when I worship God based on who he is, not what I get, not how I feel, what others think of me, or what others are doing to me, or what's happening around me, when I choose to worship God with all that's within me, this means I'm empowered. This is big now. Please hear me, because all of us probably have felt some of this this year at some level for sure, and I'm sure before that. But we choose to worship God through disappointment. We choose to worship God through pain. We choose to worship God through misunderstandings or not understanding. We choose to worship God in delay. We choose to worship God through our anger. Because the Bible says be angry and sin not. Anger is not a sin. Did you know that? It's what we do with the anger that can be a sin. I'm still working on that one. How about you? Thank you for a few honest people. Uh, I worship through what others think of me or their judgment of me. I worship God. I worship God through everything. Not, again, because of me. I worship because of him and who he is. Again, the message is into the road. Because Jesus said, he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. When I think of the tenor, again, I'm going to use that word, the tenor of our nation, the stress on individuals, marriages, um, those that aren't married, on their finances, on our health, all of us, race, the church. I'm seeing people get sucked out for things that shouldn't suck us out. And I'm seeing people get distracted, and it's easy to get distracted for all the stuff going on around us. But my number one focus above it all is that I worship God. Because when I worship God, please hear me on this point, God does something in me that the enemy can't take away from me. So when you and I worship, something powerful happens. And that's why you and I, when you think about enduring to the end, now, now he's the Savior. 
And we don't work for our salvation. We don't earn our salvation. It, it is a free gift. I'm talking about doing our part to keep our heart in check so that we endure to the end. And one of the things is we choose to worship every day. I want to, I want to challenge you in this room and online to worship God every day. Worship God every day. Even when you are struggling and you are mad and you are crying and you are cussing maybe and you, and you don't understand anything. Worship God. Give him what you got because he's God. As we say around city, he's a bad man with Gemma. You worship him because of that. If you can say nothing else, just say, Jesus, you a bad man with Gemma. I'm going to worship you for that today. But the second one goes even deeper. Again, seeing the tone of our country, the tenor of our country, seeing the plot, I would say, of the enemy against us. Again, many things we could preach on today. So the first one is we worship God. The second one, to endure to the end, is I choose to forgive others. Again, mm, mm-hmm, mm, mm-hmm. I heard all the mm in the room. Don't shut me off online. Come on now, get another cup of coffee and stay seated. Just watch me. This is big because Paul said in the New Testament, make allowance, make allowance for each other's faults. In other words, you're imperfect, they're imperfect. Make room for people to miss it. Then he says, forgive anyone who offends you because of why? The Lord Jesus has forgiven you. So you must forgive others. This, 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 this layer, or I, I would say this way, the, the onslaught of being offended is to me just expounding at, at, at just rapid speeds. People are being offended over major stuff, real stuff, and they should be angry. There is a righteous indignation that Jesus exhibited. And then there's other things that people just get offended. Everyone's so tight because of COVID, because of you know, the election, because of you know, money, because of race, because of fighting and debating and all this stuff happening. Then our own personal stuff. That it seems that like people are just quick to be offended and be angry. And like, but, but in Jesus, the Bible says that we are to forgive others. And in fact, the Bible says that anger can give a foothold to the devil in our life. Ephesians chapter 4. And so this means that in Jesus, in my faith, when I think about enduring to the end, when I think about going to the end of the road, and I think about navigating what I'm navigating, I think about my children being biracial children who America calls black, when I think about our church, when I think about the state of finances, when I think about the state of politics, the state of emotions, all the stuff going on around us. In my mind, I choose above it all to worship God. And then I choose as many times in a day I need to, which Jesus told Peter 77 times in one day, forgiving other people. This means, ladies and gentlemen, we do not hold grudges. This means we choose to forgive those who have done us wrong. We refuse to be bitter. We refuse to get revenge in our power. We refuse to live in unforgiveness because Jesus has forgiven us. The basis of you and I forgiving other people, notice, please hear me today loud and clear. The Bible says that the basis of forgiving other people is only at the feet of Jesus because he has forgiven us. He never said forgive other people because they deserve it. He never said forgive other people because they're good people. He never, he never said forgive them because you feel like it. He never said forgive them because you're just, he said forgive them because Jesus has forgiven me and forgiven you of all. That's someone who's done a lot of wrong. Of all the stuff we've done wrong. And therefore, we forgive other people. Now, in church, Christians and non-Christians, both alike, seemingly at the same speed, have a hard time at forgiving other people. But Jesus, in multiple places in the Gospels and in other verses, talked about forgiving other people. Did you know? that the John Hopkins 
a medical magazine. I think that's what it's called. Please forgive me if it's not. But I was researching this, and they said that they had done a study on people with different conditions, and they found, and I don't know how they did this, but they found that the people that were willing to forgive grievances and forgive people in their life, their health regained, and they were healthier people in general. Conversely, they found people that held on to bitterness, anger, strife, major occurrences in their life that were traumatic, that they did not let go of, they found that their health declined. And I want you to hear me today, please. This is secular people, I don't know if they're saved or not, saying medically how our bodies respond to forgiveness or unforgiveness. We also know that most diseases in America are caused by stress. So we understand that what we decide to do, how we take inventory of our internal man, has a direct impact to our physical health, let alone the people around us. And so Jesus, how do I go to the end of the road and all this crazy? Because you know the road goes up and down, don't you? You know it goes into different places and it's a struggle sometimes, isn't it? I mean, the other day, Summer and I were in a restaurant. This is only the second time this has happened to us. She didn't even see it. And I was tempted to go out and beat somebody up, but I didn't. I had someone else do it. But anyway, um, <laughs> they got paid really well. And so we were at the restaurant, and we were at Five Guys. I mean, come on, Five Guys, some, some cheeseburgers and fries. And uh, we were at the, I mean, you know, if you've been there, we were standing there getting ready to order. And she was here and facing them, and I was looking at her cheek, and I was looking at the restaurant. And there was two gentlemen that were staring at me in summer. I could tell just they were looking. And so without thinking about it, I, I gave my wife a hug. I kissed her on the cheek. And, when I, and right when I kissed her on the cheek, they began to talk to one another. And then they stopped and looked back at me with a look of hate. And I thought, man, I want to say a lot of things right now because I could feel it. You know, I could feel it. it wasn't, I wasn't making it up. I knew it. And then this this. And this thought came to me, who cares what they think? I'm with my girl. I'm going to enjoy my cheeseburger, my fries, and my unsweet tea and lemonade mix. And I'm going to have a good date with my wife because we deserve it. And I don't care what they think, and I choose to forgive them. We have to make this decision on an ongoing basis, ladies and gentlemen. This is not just going to be over. It's going to be ongoing throughout our life. Just imagine if Jesus held a grudge against us. What if Jesus got bitter because of our acts against him? What if he wanted revenge on all the stuff we've done wrong? And what if he chose not to forgive us? I hate to think what my life would be like. But we know the opposite is true. We know that he does forgive us. So when I forgive, the power of forgiveness to endure the long winding road of living for God in this life and making it to the end of that road is when I forgive, I overcome hate. I overcome grudges. Really, I overcome myself. And I overcome others because I choose to forgive. So I, 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 applore, I, I, I just implore you today, if, I, don't, I don't care how you vote. Man, don't settle for hate. I don't care how you think about race and stats and what you know or don't know. Man, support one another and mostly come alongside people. We, can, we have got to refuse to live in unforgiveness and bitterness and strife. We have to refuse to splinter apart because we don't see everything the same. That is not the work of God. That is the work of the enemy. And we are to understand that our individual role in this is that I choose. God's not going to make me worship. I have to choose to worship. And God's not going to make me forgive. I got to choose to forgive. And when I do that, through all the stuff around me, I'm not going to be perfect. I'm not going to have all good days, but I'm going to endure to the end. And I shall be saved. Not earning it. I'm not earning salvation. I'm doing my part on the journey so that the enemy of my soul doesn't deceive me or my love doesn't grow cold because of what's going on around me. My worship is burning hot because of God. And my forgiveness is willing to be a 10 out of a 10 when I don't want to. And I can't stand them. 
and they, and they judge me because of this, and they make fun of me, and they minimize me. I forgive because God has forgiven me, and I love because God has loved me. When I look at that basis, therefore, if they deserve it or don't deserve it, I forgive them. If they're good people or horrible people, I forgive them because of God. I do it all because of God. Ladies and gentlemen, please turn your focus to God. In worship, turn your focus to him. And in forgiveness, turn your focus to him. I belong to you. You belong to me. Let's go to the end of the road. I was thinking about our story. I'm almost done. In closing, that I heard, I didn't see this, but I heard this story from my dad's home church where he got saved and got planted. They had church old school, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. They kept you there all week long. They didn't want you to miss out. And there was a lady in that church whose husband had lost his mind and was in a home or maybe an institution. I don't know that part of the story, but he was not living with her. He was being cared for in another facility out of his mind. And she believed that before her husband would die, he would come in his right mind and receive Jesus. And every service, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, didn't matter the type of music, didn't matter what was going on, this precious wife would march around the whole church, raising her hands, praising God, worshiping for who he is, believing her husband was going to be saved and come in his right mind before he died. And she would do it every service. It didn't matter every service. And I'm sure people in the room were snickering at her. Oh, there's Sister Crazy Pants walking around the church again. And we don't know what she's doing. Oh, she's, you know, two shorts of Fruit Loops. And, 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 and you know how people are sometimes. I know we're not that way, but you know how people are sometimes. And, 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 and so she would do it every time. I don't know how many years it was, but finally the home said, your husband is getting ready to die. You need to come. And she begged the pastor, my dad's pastor, to come with her. And he later said he, was, he didn't want to go because he didn't he didn't have faith that 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 her her prayer was going to be answered and so they show up to the room and they get in there and she's in there and the pastor's in there and her husband's in there on the bed and he's out of his mind and he's getting ready to die and the pastor and and he was a man of God and he's in heaven today and he was a man of honor I believe this story to be true I know it's true but he said they were just talking and began to pray and all of a sudden this guy sits up in the bed comes in his right mind, looks at his wife, looks at the pastor. They lead him to receive Jesus. He lays back down in his bed, goes out of his mind, and dies a couple days later and goes to heaven. And I think about all the people that, oh, there goes Sister Crazy Pants on Sunday morning, walking around the church, worshiping God. I think about on Wednesday night, oh, there she goes again, worshiping God. But she was, she was looking at the end of the road. She was focused on her miracle. She believed that her husband, that God could raise him up and put him back in his right mind. And so she worshiped God, and she worshiped God, and she worshiped God. When she was living alone and sleeping by herself, she was worshiping God. Every time she came to church, she worshiped God and she believed God. And when people made fun of her, I'm sure she forgave them and she was practicing her faith and she was believing for her husband. And guess what? They're both in heaven today, worshiping around the throne because there was a woman who endured to the end. There was a woman who saw the end of the road and she chose to worship when she was alone. She chose to worship because he's God and she forgave people along the way. And when even her pastor said he couldn't do it. God showed up and did the miracle. Come on, because God can do anything. When you got God on your side, you're always in the majority. More is with you than against you. So worship God every day. If they don't like it because you're black, worship God anyway. If they don't like it because you're white, worship anyway. If they don't like it because you're poor or you're rich, worship and I forgive and I forgive and I forgive and my heart is warm and my heart is soft because of the goodness of my God. I feel it in my spirit today. I'm going to go to the end and I'm going to see Jesus. I don't have time to be distracted. I got to go see him. Come on, give him a great praise today. He's a mighty God. He's the everlasting father. And I'm going all the way with God. You can stand if you want. Some of you already are. Praise the Lord. Let's stand to our feet, please. I don't know where that came from. That must have been my cup of coffee a couple hours ago. This is the Holy Spirit, because he's great and really to be praised. 
God's faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful. What's the practicality as we get ready to close? What's the practicality of this? As you're standing and you're watching, I want to encourage you, just simply choose to worship every day. I, I don't know how else to tell you and to encourage myself. is just you make a decision. I'm going to worship God today. I don't care if they call me whatever. I'm going to worship the Lord because he is God and God alone. I challenge you to worship and express yourself to God. This is one way that we work. I'm going to encourage you to lift your hands, clap your hands, stand to your feet, sing off tune, sing on tune, open your heart to God. It may be uncomfortable for you or it may be natural. I don't know. But man, express yourself to God. Let God have your body. Let God have your hands. Let God have your voice. Let God have your smile. Because the Bible says that when you sing, your heart opens up and he begins to do a work. So worship God. I wish I could give you more practicality, but I can't. I mean, it's just basically a decision. I choose to worship. And I think back to that old lady walking around the church, every church service, believing God for her husband. No one else was believing with her, but she did. And man, can you imagine seeing your husband come back to his right mind and, and receive Jesus and pray and then go back in his out-of-state mind or out-of-his-mind state and then go to heaven? What a miracle. But it was a woman that endured to the end. I don't know about that, PD. I do know about that. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's shake the cobwebs out of our spirit. Let's believe in the God we sing about. Choose to worship every day. And then here, this is a massive one. Choose to forgive. And you know, when I forgive someone, it doesn't mean I have to trust them. Please hear this statement. Jesus said to love people and forgive them. He never said to trust them. So I can, it's possible to love someone and, and to forgive them, but have zero trust in them. And I can still be right with God. So hear me today in the Sermon Online. If someone doesn't earn your trust, if they've broken your trust, God's not saying to love them and like be a blind bat and go back in and get hit again. No, he's saying to forgive them, to love them. But if you need to cut the cord, cut the cord. If you need to move on, move on. If you need to have a distance in the relationship, then have the distance. So, I mean, let's not get it twisted today. You don't have to trust them, but he did ask you to forgive them because he has forgiven us. As your head is bowed and heart is bowed today in this room and online, how many would say today, Pastor Dave, you know, I, I've never received Jesus in my life and I need to receive him today. I need to receive Jesus as my Savior today. Others would say, man, I've done that before, but right now in this moment in 2020, in September 2020, I feel so far from God and I've got to come back to him. i got to have more of God and I know it. You in this room and online, if you find yourself in one of those two places right now, if that's you, say, yes, I want Jesus and I need him. Go ahead and raise your hand all over this room. I want to pray for you to receive God today. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. People coming to God today. Thank you so much. How many would say today, you know, Pastor Dave, when I think about the end of the road, think about this as we heard the song about the relationship and asking the lady to stay with him forever. Think about God and us and just the long road that it is, the turns and the ups and the downs. And you say, I want to, I want to endure to the end. I want to go to the end of the road. I want to choose to worship God and or and, excuse me, and forgive someone else. And you would say, you know what, PD? I'm struggling with one of those two or both right now. And I need God to help me worship him. I need God to help me forgive other people. I want my heart to be soft and full of fire for God. If that's you right now in this room, go ahead and raise your hand or online. I'm gonna pray for you to worship God and to forgive. Thank you, thank you. Good, hands up. Thank you today. We're enduring to the end. Follow me in this prayer so no one's left out. And please say, Lord Jesus, my heart is yours and I run to you. Please forgive me for anything that's wrong in my heart, in my mind, in my life. I turn from that. I say yes to you. I choose you. And I want to go all the way with you by the Holy Spirit. Help me worship you every day. And help me forgive other people every day. Keep my heart in your hands. I am yours. 
In Jesus' name, amen. How many believe in this today? You believe in this Jesus today? He's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think.